Shalom, my brothers and sisters. Good morning. Good evening to you all around the world. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. It's a simple statement God said to Solomon. He said, if my people, well, who are God's people? Well, those people that do his will. Jesus said, if you love me, do what I say. Keep my commandments. Be good to one another. Act like how I would act. Those are God's people, right? So this is what God says. He says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves. What does it mean to humble yourself? Well, you got to get rid of the pride in your life. There's a lot of things that people think that they can do on their own, and yet they can't do it on their own. You have to have God be the guide who leads you. So when you humble yourself, you come to God in prayer. It says pray. When you seek God's face, it says seek first the kingdom of God. Put your trust in me, right? Not my will, Father, but let yours be done. Let the Father lead you in the path of righteousness. And in those times, we may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, right? But he says, fear no evil. I am with you because my rod and staff comfort you. What is God's rod and staff? Well, the rod represents authority, right? We've talked about this before. The authority that God has in the rod, the rod of correction. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction, God's moral compass, shall drive away foolishness far from the child. And when you grow up, you put away those childish things. Turning from your wicked ways, well, what does that mean? That's repent. Repenting of your sins and turning away from wickedness. And God will hear you when you do that. He will forgive their sin. That's what Christians today basically do when you lead someone in the, in the sinner's prayer of salvation. You know, if you wish to be under God's tent, one of God's people, then pray and seek His face. Some people say the sinner's prayer isn't biblical. There's no such thing as a sinner's prayer. This is the sinner's prayer right here. It's in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It's right here. If my people were called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face. That, what does a sinner do? He prays and seeks after God and he turns from his wicked ways. He humbles himself and repents of sin. I will hear from heaven. And what does it say? I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Right there. That's your salvation. I will forgive of their sin, heal your land. Amen? That's a powerful statement right there, what God said. And this is, this is something God said right here in verse 19 that's really interesting. But if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set up before you, and go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will uproot them from my land which I have given them, and this house, which I have sanctified for my name, I will cast out of my sight, for I will make it a proverb and a byword among all peoples. Think about it. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. You will do my will. If you don't love me, you won't follow what this book says. It will go one ear and out the other. The words I say will be hollow to you if you do not love me. So if we as believers love Christ, we've got to keep in mind what he says. His will, his word is priority, not my will, Father. It's yours be done, right? And that's something we need to keep in our mind and let it set in our heart. Not my will, Father, but let yours be done. I want you to think about the story of Hosea for just a moment. God told him to marry a prostitute. Well, why would the Lord 
say to him, go marry a prostitute, because this was a story, an example of what God was saying. Nation of Israel was God's bride, God's chosen one, right? But Israel went after other gods, other idols. It was uh, tempted by the lusts of their desires, and they desired a lot of things, and they fell into much sin, much, much wickedness. But even after all that, even after they were deposed out of their own land and went into the land of Babylon and into the lands of Assyria, God still remembered them. And after 70 years of captivity in Babylon, the Jews returned to Jerusalem, to their home, and God remembered them. He never forgot his covenant with Israel. God never forgets. He never forgets us. And sometimes we forget him. And that's sad that we are so focused on other things in the world and we forget our Lord and Savior. We are like that harlot. We go astray and fall after many temptations in the world. But he can pull us back if we only ask. Remember the 99 sheep and that one went astray? That one is us, you and I, many times, many reasons. But if we do like what Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, pray, humble yourself, seek after my face. I will heal you. you turn away from your wickedness. Amen. It's a strong word, but it's the basic word that both Christians and sinners need to hear, obviously. In this, in closing, run back to God and seek after Him and do His will. God bless you, my brothers and sisters.